occurrence of gold in Scotland has been known for a long time and gold was mined particularly from the alluvial sediments in southern uplands. And Scotland even experienced its own gold rush in 1869 when miners flocked to Sutherland in the far north. But as we saw in part one, all significant gold finds at the time were made in alluvial sediments and the bedrock sources were never found. So, at the turn of the century, interest in gold exploration in Scotland waned and it took almost a hundred years before new significant discoveries were made. But this time, what they found, it was in the bedrock. At the start of the 20th century, there wasn't much interest in metals exploration in the UK in general, because the colonies supplied the empire with all sorts of resources, including gold and silver. But all that, of course, changed. From 1950s onwards, there was a more general push by the government to attract exploration and mining companies to find and develop domestic resources in the UK. This started by a countrywide geophysical survey, but in the early 1970s, it was concluded that it was time to put boots on the ground and really gather data on the mineral potential of the UK. And that was the start of the Mineral Reconnaissance Programme, or MRP, that was run by the British Geological Survey. The MRP didn't initially worry too much about gold, but focused on finding base metals and so-called strategic metals. But following some promising discoveries both within the programme, but also by private companies, the focus clearly shifted towards gold in the 1980s. And the most promising discoveries were not made in the historic gold mining districts of Southern Uplands, or even in Sutherland in the north where the gold rush played out, but here, in the Grampian terrain. The Grampian terrain is a part of an ancient mountain belt that formed more than 400 million years ago when two lithospheric plates met and collided with each other. The mountain belt as a whole runs all the way from Scandinavia to North America and hosts several known gold mineralized districts. The Grampian terrain in Scotland is the area between the Highland Boundary Fault and the Great Glen Fault. Alluvial gold had been widely reported here in the 19th century and earlier references and some historic lead and copper mines had also yielded some gold. But the main sources for the alluvial gold had not been found. In the 1980s, exploration companies turned their eyes to the Grampian terrain of Scotland and its historic mining areas. They did find some gold in Argyll and in Aberdeenshire, but much of the focus of their work was here, near Loch Tay, and they did strike gold. There were several areas of interest near Loch Tay, and exploration companies scoured the area quite extensively with the help of the British Geological Survey. The modern exploration methods included not only gold panning, but also soil sampling, trenching and drilling, among other things. Well, this vein was discovered by a company called Colby Gold near Aberfeldy in mid-1980s. And it doesn't look like very much, but this vein and some other veins nearby there is quite a lot of interest in gold exploration in this area because some samples collected from these veins yielded some quite spectacular gold rates over 300 ppm. But in the end, these veins were just too narrow and too sparsely spaced to be economic. But there was one area in the Grampian terrain 
about 40 kilometers to the west of Loch Tay. That was more promising. This is Conanish near Tyntrum. Lead has been historically mined here and 19th century references tell us that alluvial gold in the streams here was already well known back then. But the bedrock source for the gold wasn't found until the 1980s. In 1985, Enix International found the gold-bearing veins of Conanish. The veins were very close to some of the old lead mines, so the historic miners had just narrowly missed the gold-rich ore. The initial grade estimate by NX International was 8 grams per tonne average, which was really quite good. But the tonnage estimate in 1990 was only 200,000 ounces, which was just too low at the time for the mineralization to be economic. But the price of gold has significantly increased since the 1980s and this ultimately made the Connellish deposits economic, allowing Scott Gold to open the first modern commercial gold mine in Scotland in 2020. The mine is small compared to many gold mines globally. On the other hand, the high-grade, low-volume operation also means it has a very small environmental footprint. And apart from gold, the mine also yields some copper and silver, both important metals for the energy transition. Apart from Kononish though, none of the other gold-bearing vein systems that were discovered in the Grampian terrain in Scotland in the 1980s have been deemed to be economic. But let's go back to Loch Tay, because the story of gold exploration in Scotland isn't quite over yet. The higher gold prices have encouraged exploration companies to come back to Scotland to look for gold. And there has been some success already. Despite companies running around the Loch Tay area in the 1980s, they missed something. This hillside on the south shore of Loch Tay had been historically trialled for lead mining. And indeed, there is quite a lot of lead mineral gleaner here, as well as the zinc mineral sphalerite. But they missed out on the real prize, because these rocks also contain quite a lot of gold. Well, this vein system uh, and boulders around the area were analysed by Aries Gold Resources in 2019 and they also did some drilling in 2020. And the results so far have been quite interesting. The best grades so far are around 90 grams per tonne in an extensive vein system and investigations continue. So who knows? Maybe we will see another Scottish gold mine in the future. But whatever happens with these veins, this discovery has certainly demonstrated one thing, that we still haven't found everything that lies beneath Scotland's green hills. <laughs>